excellent. All right, so before we actually do the review, I wanted to show you one thing. Um, since in this workshop we did not cover the terrain uh, models, uh, but we used T-Rex instead. Um, so I'm just going to show you what the terrain models are. Um, notice that we have, um, I'm going to turn this off for a moment. This is the modifier we were given, and we were, we were given a shape file that shows the contours, right? So we read the ground elevation for each of our nodes uh, from the from that shape file um, that we used in T-Rex, right? Uh, so we went to shape file and we grabbed our um, contours file. Yeah. So you guys all did that. Um, we selected the elevation and we read the ground um, elevation which um, should look something like this, right? Uh, notice that, uh, I'm going to close this for a moment. I'm going to deactivate the terrain model. So normally, uh, on your guys' computers, you should have um, X and Y coordinates, right? As you zoom about. Well, if you want to do this in your break or any point uh, later, um, you can do that. Um, go to View Terrain Models, and I'm going to activate the one that I have. Uh, so all you do is you create a new model, and I'm going to edit it to show you. Uh, so you create a new model, select shape file as a source type uh, for your terrain model source. Browse the same contours uh, shape file that we used for uh, T-Rex. Uh, choose contour for the elevation field and set the units to feet. Okay, um, and you can choose whatever interval and minor and major interval. Uh, but look what happens when we activate a terrain model. Notice the X, Y, and now Z coordinate. So if I move about, you can see that now we are reading the Z elevations, which happen to obviously be the same that we imported with T-Rex. So I'm going to double click um, this particular manhole or any manhole that you want. And notice that um, there is a ground elevation. Um, I have this to be set to the terrain model, but um, you probably um, don't since you don't have a terrain model. Uh, but anyway, just verify and obviously we should have the same values, right? But notice the neat thing about this. Um, I'm going to move this manhole. So right now it's elevation ground 273.25. Now I'm going to move it to like here. And you see it automatically updated the ground elevation. I'm going to bring it back uh, closer to where it used to be. So it's automatically updating the ground elevation, not the invert though. Um, if you wanted to modify that, you would have to do that yourself. Um, but it's a very uh, useful thing if you're moving things about. Okay, so I'm going to modify this so that I don't change the profiles I had already calculated. Um, and just um, since we are looking at terrains here, uh, notice how little elevation difference or how flat of this terrain um, we have. So remember this dark lines represent every five feet. So there's only 10 feet drop for this entire run, which is pretty long. Um, so if we create profiles, I'm going to show you some that I have already created. Um, I have this one here that goes from this location all the way there. And my profile open on the other window, so let me just bring it over. Um, a couple of things. This is going to look different in my computer, uh, different than it looks on yours, because you probably don't have the ground elevation showing. You probably just have straight lines. So this is another benefit that we get when using those terrain models, um, the ability to see that uh, ground elevation as it is. Uh, in this profile, I'm showing the annotation label, so that probably also looks different than when you guys are used to seeing. Uh, but the reason that I brought that up is that I wanted to point 
out to you the slope of these pipes. So 0.29%. Notice that between here and there, which is 3,800 feet, there's barely a six foot drop in total elevation. So we don't even get to 1% slope. And because of this terrain being so challenging, uh, we are going to see some funny results. But, you know, that's what this was all about. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to move over to the PDF and go over the answers with you guys. Um, we are asked about the two scenarios that we created, the average load scenario and the peak load scenario. Um, so let's take a look at the average and we'll see the flow. I'm going to move over to the base where that shows our average flows. And we can do right click here since this is just steady state. We can create a data table and compare base and peak scenarios. And we can look at the flow at the outflow element. So that's where you would get your values from. Okay. Uh, I have already created a color coding uh, called depth versus rice. And I will turn my highlighting off of the profile. Just give me a moment. So how do you see the worst of all your pipes? Well, you could go to the flex tables. Let me bring that over here. You can go to your conduit table. Um, by the way, remember my conduit table was looking funny because I got rid of all the elements. I discovered that if you right click, you can reset to factory defaults. Um, so I was able to quickly uh, recover a decent looking table. Um, so I can look for that field here, the depth of a rise, and I can do a sort descending. And I can see that when the loads are the average loads, the maximum um, capacity is 51.6%, and that happens in this conduit. Um, if you want to go over to that particular location, you can select it so the line looks blue, and then go to Zoom to. And you can see that um, if you're zoomed in, it's, it's actually even more accurate. So there we are. Is the pipe highlighted in red. And, and as we'll see in a bit, it's again you know, a pipe with less than 1% uh, slope. It's like 0 0.1 or something like that. So that's what's causing that situation. Um, and let's just move over to the peak um, scenario. You'll notice that my table got updated, the results. And I'm going to sort descending here again and see that there are two pipes uh, country 36 and 13 and that's 36 and 13 that are completely surcharged that's why we're showing 100% uh, capacity when we have those peak flows okay so that's where we're getting those results from um, let's focus on this one for now uh, because the uh, table also is asking where that um, what the velocity is for those particular pipes so I'm going to double click on this one uh, CO30 or oh, 36 I think it was yeah this one and we're gonna look for velocity so it's 0 0.33 feet per second which isn't necessarily high velocity um, Again, the problem that we're seeing here is not that there's a ton of flow, it's just that these pipes are basically laying flat because of the terrain. And I will show you that particular profile again. I'm going to highlight it. And so these are the pipes that are full. And you, if you see my color coding here, uh, CO36 has a 0.04% slope. So it's pretty flat. Um, so if you could modify some of that, that would improve um, your profiles and 
um, percentage full uh, and all that. Um, in addition to looking at the velocity in our pipes, we can take a look at the tractive stress. So if you wanted to um, do it individually, you can uh, look it up here, 0 0.1118. Uh, or you can also go to our flex tables, conduit table, and if you don't have the tractive force, I don't have it in this one, I can pull it up, make it show up as another column. And tractive stress calculated. And you can see very, very little tractive stress. Um, again, because it's just things are barely moving, it's just kind of like they're flat pipes and the water is sitting there. Okay, so let's start answering some of the questions. Were the velocities very high during the average flow conditions? Um, let's go back and take a look. Uh, if you right click, there are a couple of things that you can do. You can do statistics, which shows you maximum value, mean value, minimum, standard deviation. So the average velocity is less than one foot per second. So no, we have very little velocities. There's also something neat that you can um, do here when you are I forgot to show you this in extended period simulation, but you could show a spark line. This doesn't really apply for um, um, steady state because we only have one value. But uh, if you if you're looking EPS, maybe oh, maybe let me show you that now. That's actually something uh, very neat. Let's see if we can show it here. Um, let's find something that changes. Okay, so that's what the spark lines look like. So, I don't know, I think that's pretty neat. <laughs> okay, uh, let me go back to where we were. Sorry about the detour, I just um, wanted to show you that. Okay, so we've seen tractive stress, we've seen that the velocities are pretty low. Um, if we sort the velocities um, descending, we can see that a few pipes are above uh, two feet per second, but the large ma majority are below that. And let's see what happens if we increase the peak. Let's see uh, if we increase the flow. In the peak scenario, and I go back there, look at our velocities. Um, it's kind of the same situation, so it really it's not because of the uh, flow. It is mainly due to that low slope. Now we still have really, really low velocities. Um, question number three asks, if you could redesign the system, how would you have changed it? And this is a challenging system because of the terrain. But you could, um, we'd have to see, we'd have to know exactly what is going on here at the outfall. Uh, if it's flowing gravity um, to a treatment plant or something like that. Uh, if you notice the elevation here is 266, but there seems to be like a road here uh, at 242. So if you had the ability to go lower at this elevation, uh, you'd have to bury your pipes a little bit more everywhere, which would be more costly, more excavation costs, uh, but you would improve um, the velocities in your system, uh, which also brings me to something that I promised you guys I would bring today. Um, one of the questions yesterday was about that minimum two feet per second velocity, and I said, you know, different towns and different municipalities would have different requirements. So I just did a quick Google search and 
um, there's a, a an example one here. Okay, so this one, for example, uh, specifies a velocity minimum velocity of two feet per second. Uh, this, by the way, is for North Carolina, and um, sometimes it specifies whether it's for the design flow, which it's typically um, the peak flow. Um, here, I found another required velocity is at design flow. And we'll see above that that is a peak flow. Uh, has to be at least two feet per second, maximum ten feet per second. Um, flow velocity. Let's go to this one over here. Uh, here's one in. I think this one is from London, Canada. Minimum velocity 0.6 meters per second. So. So every every place has different requirements, but that seems to kind of be a standard. All right, so let me go back to where we were <laughs> and talk about um, um, the rest of the questions. So we see that if this were our design and all the pipes have like zero feet per second velocity, they probably wouldn't pass our minimum requirements. Um, so you might have to either go uh, deeper with the slopes um, and then do a pump station somewhere um, to offset that. So that's why we get paid, right? <laughs> to do those kind of designs. All right, and then the last two questions are regarding the tools that we learned to use. Uh, what are the data formats that Model Builder supports? And you can just open Model Builder and see all the possibilities. And the final question was, uh, when is it um, recommended to use Load Builder? It is to import sanitary flows, sanitary loads. Okay. So our dry weather sanitary loads, and we have different methodologies for doing that. Point load data, the customer meters, billing records, and population data are probably the most uh, most commonly used. Um, there's also something here that we didn't really cover a whole lot, but if you bring individual customer meters as their own element, so these little houses that you can see here, here you could also associate that to the nodes. Um, basically, if you were to use these property connections for each of your customers. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.